What is the best and the worst competitive season? Obviously, you know, it's outside of chapter five, season three. Well, I ranked every single season starting from chapter one, season six, all the way up till now and based them on how good their meta was for the time, how enjoyable was the season's tournaments, what tournaments were available and what the prizing was. And finally, would this season be good now if the next season you played was this all over again? I then added all of these scores together and created the definitive list of what is the best and worst season and I'm sure no one will ever disagree with this ever because they never do. All right, so let's start things off with chapter one, season six, the first season that really had competitive in it. Now, the meta, pretty horrific. Heavy snipers, grenade launchers, quad launchers, rifts, traps, mounted turrets, you name it. All, all around pretty horrible. But enjoyment was really high for competitive because this was the beginnings of online tournaments. There were Alchemist and Scavenger pop-up cups, which essentially gave you no prizing, but instead they gave you a little pin. So if you got to a certain point threshold, they gave you a reward fun. But more importantly, there was the first Winter Royale online qualifier. So this was actually a $1 million event the finals of was held in the next season, but there was online qualifiers this season. And that was really the first time that this had been done. So because of that, I'm going to give it a three for the meta, an eight for enjoyment, a four for tournaments, and then a one for would it be good now because no one would enjoy this now. Next season in chapter one, season seven was a generationally horrible meta, uh, which had quad launchers, rocket launchers, grenades, boom boxes, which only lasted like a patch or two, but still ball rockets, rifts, hand cannons, P90s, grapplers. You could still carry 10 minis. Uh, there were stink grenades, planes, heavy snipers. I actually wrote rocket launchers twice. That's how many there were. And of course, to start things off, we also had the infinity blade in there too. This is what I mean, a generationally bad meta. Uh, one out of 10 for meta, just in case you were wondering. Sing, sing, sing. Uh, and for tournaments, they ended up having more pop-up cups, kind of similar to what we had before. But then there was the finals of the Winter Royale, which we already mentioned, which was the first big online event from memory, which was $1 million. We also started to test things like the first Trios Cups. There was the big Share the Love event, which was the first thing that Mongrel really ever won out there too. So overall, it was good, but one for meta. That was stinking it up. Nine for enjoyment because of all of the various reasons we mentioned. Four for the tournaments because, you know, there were still no real really good cash cups, but there was an improvement over the last season. And then a one for now as well. Next up is chapter one, season eight. And this is a personal favor of many, many people. Now, the meta was much better than the previous that we've seen so far. You know, it was like a pump attack meta, which is cool. Flint knocks were added. Peppers were for good mobility. The shadow bombs, launch pads, gladder redeploy. There was some kind of frustrating things like heavy snipers, boogie bombs, the drum gun, uh, a lot of explosives, you know, a real trend in chapter one. But there's also like the baller meta, which, you know, was kind of stupid looking at it, obviously looking back. But in terms of some of the mobility items we've seen so far, it wasn't actually the worst because you could still like spray them out and things like that. The tournaments, though, the tournaments this season were incredible. It started off with Eve Oh, yeah, I can't speak. ESL Katowice Royale, which was the one of the first big LAN events held by a third party, where basically everyone's drop spot got nuked like two days before as they were flying to the event. So all the NA players got like nothing. There's also a lot of big online events that were practicing for the World Cup qualifiers, which are like Scallywag Cup, Lux Cups. It was a gauntlet cup. It was really, really good. And then, of course, the big ones were the first four weeks of the Fortnite World Cup was held here too. Uh, also, this had a lot of bugs with the pirate cannons, which I've showed in a lot of videos already, and they are hilarious. There's no way the f***ing cannon just bugged. I'm going to tell you, this is going to get a good scoring. Meta, I'm giving it a 6 out of 10 because, you know, ballers, too many explosives and things like that. You know, not great. Enjoyment, I put 8. I'm putting 9 out of 10. That's a 9 out of 10. It's World Cup qualifiers, like, of course. That's, like, one of the peak. Almost a 10 out of 10. Tournaments, 10 out of 10. Let's be real. This is like the best season of tournaments, especially with the prizing. And then the now, I put a 9 out of 10. Very high. But you can't tell me if you went back to this season, even though the meta is a little questionable, with all these tournaments, you would love it. So very highly rated for Chapter 1 Season 8. And of course, Chapter 1 Season 9 is going to be really similar to that. But I will say the meta this season was significantly worse, predominantly due to the addition of the combat shotgun and the legendary and epic tactical shotgun. Now, if you know anything about that tack, I hate it. It's really stupid. And it was even worse back then. And the pre-nerfed combat shotgun was also incredibly powerful. The drum shotgun was also 
added this season and on release it was horrifically overpowered too so the meta a lot worse but this also still had weeks 5 to 10 of the fortnite world cup qualifiers plus the world cup finals the map was one of the best ever with places like neo tilted mega mall lots of diversity across the whole map map mobility with the slip streams i put a three for the meta that's fair the meta was awful 10 for enjoyment 10 for tournaments and a 9 for now. If this was the season you were offered with all this money and the World Cup qualifiers, you would love this. Chapter 1, Season X. I've put so many videos of mechs on this channel, but I guess this is just going to be another one now. Not only did this season have the mechs in the meta, for most of it, it was kind of nerfed a lot towards the end, but it took way too long. We're just going to count the mechs as in, in the full season. There's also rift zones, which were incredibly annoying, like Tilted Town, the area where you just couldn't build. Our retail row, which was incredibly powerful, pretty much defined all of FNCS, where you had the cube monsters and it was incredibly overpowered. There was Taco Time and Greasy Grove. Like, what were they thinking? Where you would just start dancing randomly in the middle if you walked into a POI. Uh, funny clips from that season. Horrific map. Horrific meta. Well, the map was actually kind of cool now that I think about it. And the shotgun meta was good because it was back to like Pump Tack, which, if you know, is one of my favorites. But meta, horrific. Now, this gets another massive bump up for the tournaments here because they were insane. The FNCS, this is kind of the first season where it actually was hosted, chapter one season eggs, and the prizing was literally insane. If you won a week of the qualifiers, of which, by the way, there were five qualifier weeks, goaded, uh, you'd earn $96,000 on you. That's $32,000 per player because it's in trios. Uh, and if you win grands, it was $480,000. That's $160,000 per person, which was truly insane. Uh, and even outside of that, solo cash cups and trio cash cups were also nuts too. There was two solo cash cups a week. And if you won one, it was either two and a half K or seven K, depending on which one there was. And you could play both. And then there was a trio cash cup as well. And if you won that, it was $18,000 to the winning team. So money this season and tournaments went crazy. And as a note, I put, they introduced the Middle East region. So uh, meta, three out of 10. This, this was a solid 3 out of 10 meta. You know, mechs, all that stuff. Enjoyment, I put 2. I think that's generous. Because uh, this season, you know, with the mechs and all that, that enjoyment. Most people really hated a lot of this season. Uh, tournaments, though. 10 out of 10. No doubt is 10 out of 10. Now, my would people enjoy this now? I've put a 5 out of 10. I feel like people could put up with these mechs and the Rift Zone meta if you had these prizing back. So uh, I've gone with a 5. Maybe that's a little low. I think it was pretty good myself. Moving on to chapter two, season one. Now, this was kind of a blank state for not only competitive, but for the base game anyway. So the meta was incredibly, incredibly simple. You basically just had like an AR, burst AR, the heavy assault rifle, and then the shotguns were like tack and pump. You know, you had some ancillary weapons like the SMG pistol sniper, and then it was just launch pads for mobility and you had rocket launchers. The season did start with grenades in, but they're a little broken because you could grenade strat with them. So they ended up getting removed, but there was no mobility. I put launch pads. There was no mobility. I, I lied about launch pads. Sorry. So yeah, really blank state meta, but it was a squad season. So no mobility in squads actually makes a lot of sense combining these two together. New map, enjoyment was pretty high. Uh, it did also introduce the first platform cash cups. So it split between PC and console. So you had basic and mobile as well. So depending on whatever you wanted to play, you had some sort of tournament uh, and the pricing was obviously very, very insane as well. For some reason, we didn't actually run squad cash cups. Like, it was a squads mode for FNCS, but it didn't run squad cash cups, so it made absolutely no sense. There was also still four weekly qualifiers. You had heats, you had grands for FNCS, and there was also the DreamHack Winterland. So, you know, for competitive, we were swimming in it. Got even better, of course, when it came to December time, and for some reason, Epic Games decided to throw $23 million into a duo Winter Royale. Uh, so I put 9 for tournaments. Hold on. This is a 10. Sorry. Sorry. I've changed it to 10 out of 10. How could I do that? The problem with this season a little bit, which will bring down our enjoyment score, was squads is boring. It's boring to watch. It's also boring to play. It's hard to find teammates with, and especially back then. And on top of that, the season was the longest season of all time. It was 127 days. So basically after FNCS ended, there was like two and a half months of just solo cash cups. So people were kind of starting to lose their mind a little bit in there but you know the season introduced a lot of also really interesting things boats fishing swimming 100% uh, chest spawns as well uh, alongside a harpoon so there's a lot of really good stuff this season so for meta 9 out of 10 no mobility super solid fishing 100% chest spawns like you know we really can't complain about the meta enjoyment I put a 6 because it was kind of a boring I feel like this is like a season where people look back at it and they're like oh this was this was really great it was really fun but in the moment it was so long that it just ended up like really dragging on and being kind of boring tournaments 
10 out of 10. Three seasons in a row where I put, four seasons in a row where I put 10 out of 10 tournaments. Uh, you can't not have a 10 out of 10 tournament with a $23 million Winter Royale in there too. Now I've put nine out of 10 as well, because let's be real, anyone would go back to play that Winter Royale for just the free cash that was there. Same with having that meta. This has aged incredibly well, in my opinion, outside of the enjoyment at the time, which wasn't very good. All right, controversial one, chapter two, season two. Now, if you're a casual player, maybe you didn't play a lot back then for tournaments, but this season was very hit or miss. If you were a casual player, you loved it. If you were a pro player, you also probably loved it. If you were the average competitive player, this season was kind of very frustrating. So this is the first season that really introduced mythics into the game, like consistently. Um, and it was basically a season where you get mythics or you die to mythics. You know, you had things like the Midas' drum gun, which is incredibly broken, the Sky's assault rifle, which still had a two times headshot multiplier, so you could just instantly die to it. There was like a Kaboombo. Uh, There's Brutus' minigun, which basically aqua conditioned the whole lobby uh, from. There was a minigun meta where there was other miniguns all just lying around you could take. There's remote explosives, heavy sniper. So the meta was not good unless you had a mythic already. So it kind of introduced that idea of mythic drop spots which I still am not that fan of today. Now, the map was really good, though. They did add a lot to it. It basically just became very additive to the season before, where season one was a blank slate, and then they just added a bunch to the map. And tournaments this season were also incredibly good. This is one of the best tournament seasons, purely because we had daily cups. You know, didn't really give you much prizing, but essentially gave, got a little bit of prizing just for winning the tournament. It was also the first season which had console FNCS, which wasn't good for FNCS by any means, because they did no broadcast. They did nothing about it. They just split the prize pull up, but it was good for the console players. And there's also the first two round cash cups. So this is kind of where that begun back in February 2020, long time ago. On top of that, we had two FNCSs. We had the first duo FNCS, which had four weekly qualifiers. Awesome. And then there was still the solo FNCS Invitational as well. So, I mean, 10 out of 10. Actually, another 10 out of 10 tournament season, now that I think about it. Uh, really, really good. Lots of nostalgia this season. People love it, but in controller players were absolutely insane this season because of the new settings. So that also is pulling our meta down. So for meta, I'm giving it a 5. Not that highest. Enjoyment, I'm giving it 8, because a lot of people enjoyed the time, but it was, you know, because it, it's a lot of people's favorite season, but I didn't enjoy it that much. Maybe my personal bias. Tournaments, 10. Again, I'm just giving 10 for everything maybe for these tournaments maybe i need to start reducing that but there was two fncs's come on like you know what can we talk about and would people enjoy it now i've given it a six chapter two season three now this is one of my favorite seasons of all time uh it had a super unique map that had a lot of water around it to really like showcase the new swimming mechanics but it was another season which was kind of dominated by mythics again they were a little bit more balanced than the previous one but catty corner in particular was just like far too strong you essentially had 18 shockwaves in the in the launcher assuming that your teammates didn't also have rockets so one person could carry 18 shockwaves and everyone else just had like launch pads or crash pads. So this made it really unfair and unbalanced. So it was like one really, really strong drop spot. I would say that I really like the meta with the shotguns, like attack and charge is a really, really good combination. And they also made a really good change in reducing headshot damage from two times to 1.5 times. So some good things. I liked it a lot more than the previous season's meta, but it, it, yeah, it, was, it was okay. It was okay. Tournaments were really good though. This is the first time that DreamHack hosted a solo online event like a big event that people can play. Please, can we have these back? They were amazing. Big prize pools, you know, basically a couple rounds. It was kind of like a mini solo FNCS that you could just play any time. But speaking of solo FNCS, uh, there was also a solo FNCS this season, but there was a solo FNCS last season, and we had two weekly solo cash cups, and there was the solo dream hacks. So basically everything was solos this season. As, if you know me, I love solos. There was too much solos this season. It just everything was solos. Uh, on top of that, for the FNCS, they crammed four qualifiers into two weeks. So it was like you'd play nine hours on a Saturday and a Sunday, both weeks in a row, which, you know, that was a, that was a lot. So tournaments, you know, all solos. Why were sharks in this season as well? It hurts me, but I think the meta here is a seven, which it was reasonably good. Catty launcher was a bit broken. Enjoyment, I'm putting five because of all the solo tournaments. Uh, tournaments, five. And now I would say probably six because there was a lot of events that people would enjoy now. But at the time, it was just there was so much solos before it and then during it as well. It pains me to put that so low because it is one of my favorite seasons, I will say. Chapter two, season four. Or Stark season, baby. This is a big one. Now, they really made a good effort this season. I think this is the first time that Epic realized that mythics were becoming a bit of a problem. So they did keep a huge percentage of the mythics out of the loot pool, which is amazing. The only ones that really stayed in were Doctor Doom's Arcane Gauntlets, and they were like 
kind of mid anyway, so it wasn't really that bad. This season, fishing was incredibly powerful because they just introduced shieldfish and jellyfish and all those kind of things. And there were spicy fish, I think, as well, as well. So there was good mobility. So fishing became really strong. There was also really good map mobility where there was a lot of rifts uh, and but a bit too many mobility items like shockwaves and things like that. I do think this meta maybe would have been a little bit worse had it not been for Mongrel Mitro and Tayson, like dominating it and making it such a special season. But let's be real, the, the actual shotgun meta was really good because it was very easy to get yourself a gold pump. You could just 50-50 land on a Stark chest. You'd get good look from it. you get good shields. For tournaments, this season became a little worse than the previous because the qualifiers were reduced down to three and prize money was removed from those qualifiers as well. They did have the reboot round, which was super, super hype. Uh, and there was still a lot of good money for winning FNCS, but the prize pool was still split between console and PC. So it kind of made it so that the winning teams didn't get anywhere near as much as they would historically. Like it was $111,000 for winning, which is 37K each on EU, which is the biggest. Now it's even, it's like 100K or something. I can't remember what it is now. But they did add monthly DreamHack solos, which was pretty awesome. For meta, I'm going to give this an eight being able to get gold pumps and stuff and just one pump everyone was fun enjoyment it's gotta be a nine gotta love landing on a start chest tournaments i would change that to like maybe a seven i would say and now i think a lot of people would still enjoy this meta if you went back to it so i'm, I'm gonna give this maybe an eight as well chapter two season five now this is where competitive almost peaked there was like eight hundred thousand people watching the broadcast for fncs grand finals here which was really really incredible and i had a very interesting shotgun meta that did not involve pump for once which usually i don't like but there was the dragon's breath shotgun the charge, the tack, and the lever. Uh, and at the time, cruising of the lever didn't even feel that bad because all of the other shotguns had like negatives to them. Was, I, you know, me, I love a charge shotgun, I would say as well, but there was no launch pads. There was just bouncers for mobility. You had kind of sand tunneling gimmicks, which is a bit rubbish. Incredibly balanced season. This is probably one of the best metas we've had and just one of the best balanced, but also it had some of the best tournaments. Now, this is the year following the Winter Royale. So this one hosted the $5 million Frosty Frenzy bit down from the previous year's $23 million, but a $5 million where you just give away money is, is kind of insane for tournaments to start with, obviously. But it did have a bit of a problem when it came to FNCS, because this is, again, the second season where they've removed qualifier money from FNCS. So people weren't really trying that hard because there was no reason to. The top teams, essentially, if you had a good week one, or, and maybe done okay in week two. There was no reason to try in week three. So there's a lot of griefing that went on in this season. So, and a lot of trolling and things like that, which was kind of annoying. So FNCS actually ended up being good in the grands, but a lot of the weeks did not end up being that good. But there was a lot of fun tournaments here, like the Laser and Fresh's super knockback event. I can't remember. They're testing like arena box fighting. And there's some other throwback tournaments in creative that were also really nice. And this is something a lot like Fortnite modern tournaments are missing. There's not like a lot of creativity in a lot of them. So they really tried to test a lot of new things this season. So really good. Meta, eight. Enjoyment, eight. Tournaments, eight. Now, I think, I think I'm going to give an eight across the board on everything there. Chapter two, season five was a really good competitive season in my eyes. Chapter two, season six. Makeshift weapons you can craft at the primal. Primal shotgun being super stupid. The crafting, generally, actually, the crafting mechanic was just kind of slow and annoying. Just give me a good gun. I don't want to have to craft it into something better than that. Give me the pump. It was cool you could always get, like, a good pump. If you found, like, a blue makeshift, you could craft it up. That was fine. There was, like, some sort of trajectory and loot paths you could take for that, but it was just kind of boring. Snipers were kind of like bows, which was actually incredibly powerful, whereas you could just do, like, a 212 headshot damage with the mechanical bow, which was really, really strong. And despite the primal shotgun being, like, really broken on release, it did get nerfed considerably, so it wasn't that bad. There was a lot of stink floppers which were in competitive and for some reason there was no metal in the entire middle of the map and we had raptors in cash cups why please tell me why in 2021 tournaments were pretty much the same every single season but obviously this one did not have the five million dollar frosty frenzies so this meta that's a that's a five meta i'm being generous by saying five for primal season enjoyment three Nobody enjoyed Primal Season. If you did, you are lying right now. You have rose-tinted goggles on, or glasses, whatever it's called. Tournaments, it was kind of similar to this previous season, but without Frosty Frenzy, so I'm giving that a six. And now, uh, three. Unsurprisingly, I do not like Primal Season. Chapter two, season seven. This is the alien-themed one. Now, the map changes this season were pretty much non-existent. Every single season, people were asking, please, can we have, like, bigger map changes? And then they just changed the center of the map instead, which was kind of frustrating. A lot of POIs also got worse this season because of, like, the alien abduction theme. Uh, the launch pads came back. But one of the most annoying things that were in the game for the most season, or for most of the season, was the alien parasites, which basically stood on your head, and if you shot them, it just negated any 
any headshot damage and they allowed you to like i think sprint a little faster but jump a little higher as well fighting someone with an alien parasite on your head was so frustrating but i will say for solo cash cups the item the inflatable that they added was one of the best mobility items of all time it was super super balanced and i wish they would bring it back to be honest with you meta it was really balanced to be honest with you most of the, the like shotgun and ar meta was really balanced but because of the power sites i'm going to bring it down to like a seven overall i would say enjoyment most people thought this was relatively okay it's getting a six tournaments it had two fncs's the solo all-star showdown and trio fncs so we're bumping that boy up to an eight nine i think i meant to say the word now but i just said nine i think a lot of people would be really fine if this meta came back now so i'm also giving this a seven and the final season of chapter two was chapter two season eight now this was boring hold with me because it was felt pretty much the same as like the previous few seasons a lot of the final seasons in chapter two i think were impacted by covid were not much really just changed and that same map had pretty much been played for two years solid the meta was pretty good actually the orange new crash sites were, were pretty good sideways areas were a good way to get ammo but shadow floppers kind of ruined the vast majority of the seasons like solo cash cups duo cash cups and like early fncs meta as well tournaments now this had some seriously good tournaments because there was late game cups are in here there was the monthly dream hack there was cash cup extra that were added if you did good in the original trio cash cup there was trio fncs and there was the grand royale which was like what would turn into the end of year land in there too unfortunately you know the fncs format had 12 reboot rounds which was awful and grand royale had 32 you basically had to win one of 32 games to get into the grand finals which was truly horrific but they did start adding things like community cups for skins in this moment for the fncs skin in particular so it was pretty good they also added the first console championship cup which was basically like the first big console cup since they removed uh console fncs which i forgot to mention earlier on meta i'm giving this an eight not a five actually the shadow floppers basically pulled this down considerably uh enjoyment i'm giving this a six because it felt rather repetitive from the past like few seasons that were before it and there was not a lot of hype or like, things like the grand royale tournaments eight because there was incredible tournaments and now i'm gonna give this an eight as well i think people would really actually no i'm giving it a nine i think people would really enjoy going back and playing this season i think really one of the only main issues was the shadow floppers chapter three season one this is gonna be another one which will probably be controversial to the casual viewers out there this season was not good competitively it was very good casually because a lot of people loved the skins the collabs but this is a competitive breakdown and those things don't matter for competitive now the spider-man's web shooters were originally incredibly broken for competitive where they had 80 uses but they actually got nerfed down to 10 uses only in competitive which was actually really good and they became very good mobility to use you have to think when am i going to use these 10 uses at what point in the game should i use them early mid end game and don't want to waste them so they actually became a really good item for competitive the worst part about this was just the meta was horrific this season the striker pump shotgun that was added was too weak because it hadn't been buffed yet so most players ended up just running the stinger smg and an mk7 now the mk7 assault rifle basically was not balanced whatsoever because this is epic's really first push into a lot of first person weapons when you aim down sights and there was no bullet drop off or anything so you could just shred people with the mk7 and then the stinger smg was so strong in box there's just no need to take a shotgun so the fighting meta was really really bad however this season for tournaments did start the theme of actually just having one main cash cup for the main game mode which is duos and then one solo cash cup in a week which was great they did unfortunately run out of time this season which meant that they only had two fncs qualifiers which we've just had this year and it sucks meta you're getting a solid three out of ten sorry enjoyment new chapter but meta was frustrating i'm giving that a four tournaments mm, mid four uh, and now I don't think people would enjoy playing this meta whatsoever. So I'm also going to give it a four. Pretty low on the rankings. I know the casuals are mad, sorry. Uh, chapter three, season two added a couple of really important things. Zero build, which for tournaments was incredibly important for keeping the cheaters out of build mode. Added mantling and sprinting. I also forgot to mention sliding was in the previous season two. And the meta felt a little bit better because the striker pump had been buffed. So now it felt a little bit more usable. We see launchpad meta overall, but to be honest, nothing really interesting happened in chapter three generally, which is why comp had such bad viewership and the game was kind of not that interesting in chapter three generally. Meta, I'm giving this a five. Launchpads, striker pump buff, you know, sprinting added. It was pretty good. Enjoyment, I'm going to also give it a five. People were kind of bored of not really interested in chapter three generally. 
tournaments. I'm given a six because zero build was added, which added another depth to the, the seasons. And now I think if you took this again, I think people wouldn't really enjoy that that much. So I'm getting rid of a five. Now chapter three, season three was very similar to chapter three, season two. Outside of the fact that I had the grapple glove, which is just basically Spider-Man's web shooter again, but they did vault the combat SMG, which was really broken in the previous season. So I'm going to give this a six for the meta, maybe a seven. Nah, six. I'll, be, I'll give it a six. Enjoyment, uh, again, mid five. Tournaments, six, same as the last season. And now I'm just going to give it a five again. Previous, same as basically the last season, but with a slightly better meta. But chapter three, season four, that season was A, very different from meta and just tournaments, everything was really different there. So for the meta, this was where they changed up the shotguns a lot and they actually used the prime shotgun, which a lot of people loved because it did more damage with the first shot in the magazine, whereas now I, this is a bit of a gimmick, so I'm not that fan of it, but they also had things like the ranger shotgun, which again is a bit of a gimmick in this one shot. But if you actually watch back from some of the tournaments, there was a lot of variety in which shotguns people decided to run this season. Launch pads were also turned into an item and a throw item at that so they weren't just like a free guaranteed pickup you have to think about if you're going to choose them or not so meta i actually really really like the chapter three season four meta tournaments though now the tournaments hosted were incredible there was no fncs online but was the first land back which was the fncs invitational which was really good but rather than running cash cups and all these kind of things that they normally would they run divisional cups which was a kind of ranked system where you could kind of go up to different ranks you enter different tournaments depending on where you placed in the previous one this is something i actually hope they really add Add back but there was also late game cups which are added which did not work at all they were bugged but they were fun when they did for like the one event i was able to try and then when it was good so meta seven out of ten i think that's good enjoyment i think a lot of people really enjoyed this season i did too eight out of ten tournaments amazing tournaments i'm giving you an eight out of ten prizing wasn't always as incredible as some of the older ones now, if we went back, I think people would really enjoy this season, so I'm also giving that an 8. So, highly rating Chapter 3, Season 4. Who would have thought? Not me, anyway. Chapter 4, Season 1. A new chapter all around. Now, this is the Shockwave Hammer season. Now, I think the Shockwave Hammer was so incredibly annoying, and it was an infinite Shockwave. Like, it was really interesting this season, where Shockwave Hammer was in competitive. But the shock waves themselves, which were not infinite shock waves, were held out of competitive. The red eye assault rifle was also like one of the least skillful ARs ever. It was far too easy to hit massive damage with this thing. So I, I wasn't a massive fan of the, the actual meta this season at all. But they did add the most useless movement mechanic, which was hurdling, which just never works properly still to this date. But they did add reality augments, which I thought were a really good addition to the game. Tournaments hit the divisional cups, which was really cool. But they also introduced the solo victory cash cups this time and it had a 10 game final if you never played them back then which was really really good but one of the bad things that happened in chapter 4 season 1 was that they added the region lock so you could not play multiple regions of cash cups which was very annoying and servers were just horrific this goes for all chapter 4 seasons but we'll come back to a big one in this later servers were awful and server performance in particular felt like you're playing on like 50 plus ping to whatever you would normally uh which was really really bad so for meta I'm giving this a solid like 5 out of 10 because shock, well, 4 out of 10 because of shockwave hammers. Enjoyment. I actually, I think a lot of people enjoyed this, even though the meta was really bad. I actually think this was still quite an enjoyable season, so I'm going to give it a 7. Tournaments. Uh, tournaments were pretty good. I think the victory cash was allowed to make good money and the divisional cups were good. FNCS was on. There was a qualifying path to get to the FNCS Global Championships at the end of the year. So I'm going to give a tournament a 7 as well. Now, I think a lot of people would enjoy this season as well, so I'm going to go back to a 6. Next season, Chapter 4 season two now this is the kinetic blade season which was really good meta or some of it now this season made it was really hit or miss like some parts were really good and other parts were really bad let's start off with some of the cool things they added which was mid-game objectives so the first one being loot island was added this season and there was also the combat caches that were added now i still think combat caches are probably the most balanced mid-game objective please get the bunkers out just give us combat caches again i think they're really really good unfortunately you know they added the slurp juices with these the buffed slurp juices which were really broken and you could get them from the combat caches or from loot island as well which i just think they were just a little bit too over no they're not a little bit too over they were way too overpowered and as soon as you were fighting someone who popped one it became incredibly frustrated there was also the overclocked pulse rifle which you got from loot island which was insanely broken plus heal off this season was so bad because of the reality augment where pizza time where you could get the uh, pizza and you could just infinitely heal you'd slurp juices you had med mists all a lot of chapter four came down to tons of laggy heal offs which was incredibly annoying 
Same thing at the end of the season, they also added the ODM gears, which was so frustrating for solo cash cups uh, and for dual cash cups towards the end of the season. So meta this season, not great for a lot of it, but like those were all the additional things. The stuff like the kinetic blades, the rifle, the AR shotgun meta, like those were really good. But a lot of the additional things that came on top of that were just very, very frustrating. Because of the kinetic blades not being chocolate farmers, I'm still gonna give it a six on the meta. Enjoyment, I'm gonna give it a six as well. Tournaments, I'm also just gonna give it a seven, the same as the previous season. And now I'm gonna give it a six as well, same as the previous season. I did really like the map changes that were added in this season though. I've got to say like Mega City and the whole kind of Southeast biome that was there. Chapter four, season three's meta, not that great. It had the slurp plants, which basically encouraged a lot of surge trading. Uh, the new middle map was cool, I like that. The, the way you could go around the vines or whatever it was called was pretty awesome. I like the mud sliding added, but the flapjack rifle, 45 bullets, you could just spam it at people was kind of just frustrating because they just never stopped pressuring you. You could never heal. Mammoth pistol meant you just kept getting headshotted for massive damage all the time. It was annoying. Slurp juices, still in, not nerfed. And the flare gun was also very, very annoying. Tournaments kind of stayed the same as, as previous as well, which was really good. There was a good amount of consistency there, which was awesome. But yeah, servers were just also completely awesome awful too. Meta, solid five. Enjoyment, I think was a six. Tournament, same as before, seven. Now, I think we also give it a six for the now. Chapter four, season four. Now, this meta was interesting. The Twin Meg AR was kind of like the red eye from season one, but not as broken, I would say. It was, if you had good aim, like you were just frying people with the Twin Mag AR all the time because that had very minimal reload, especially since it was a crash pad meta where people just crash pad and you could just beam them out of the sky. But the main issue here was this was peak lag, uh, in particular in the FNC's Global Championships. This was one of the laggiest tournaments, maybe the laggiest tournament to date that I've ever seen. Actually, that's not true. The Red Bull event that I went to in this season last year was the laggiest event. So yeah, not great. No FNCS, but the FTS Global Championship was held, which is awesome. For the meta, I'm giving this a six, mainly because they added forecast towers, which I hate. Unfortunately, they're incredibly frustrating. I think this was an enjoyable season. I'm giving it a seven. Tournaments, I'm going to have to give this a five. Even though the Global Championship was there, the lag made this unbearable. And now I'm giving this a two on now. Actually, maybe a three on now. Let's be real. The lag, if any player goes back and watches tournaments from this chapter, trust me, you don't want to play tournaments in that kind of lag. It was it was genuinely horrific. Chapter four, OG season that we're seeing. Now, this is a complicated one because the meta was really all over the place. It was like a four week, you know, monthish long season where the meta just continually changed with every single update every week that was out. So it's difficult to say what the metas were, but for the most part, they weren't that great, I would say. On average, I would give these like a five. There was a lot of mobility, a lot of kind of explosion explosives that were in there too. It was really difficult to get shields because they were incredibly rare, which was very frustrating. So I'm giving that a five. Tournaments, this is a solid two out of 10 for tournaments because it was all open tournaments, no two round tournaments, and they were all just it full of cheaters. It was just cheaters all the time in this. And honestly, it, it felt like a real regression of the game for OG in that sense. Enjoyment, I'm going to give it a solid seven because despite the tournaments not being that good, it was still just nostalgic and fun to play in the OG season regardless. Now, would people go back and play this again? Probably not. They'd probably enjoy the nostalgia of it, but not necessarily actually the tournament aspect because they were pretty bad. So I'm going to give this a five. Moving on to chapter five, season one. One. Now, this season introduced a lot of interesting meta changes, in particular the heal change where you can walk whilst using medkits or big pots, which made heal off kind of frustrating because what this meant was that medkits slowly, gradually went up over time. So now you can actually heal off not just with med mists and slurps and floppers, but now med kits in particular became very, very important for heal off. And this was a lot of what happened in Chapter 5 Season 1. They did also add bullet drop, which I know a lot of people really don't like and they want hit scan weapons, but for competitive bullet drop, in my opinion, is absolutely the right decision because some of the issues that I've already mentioned in the previous seasons with hit scan weapons being too easy to use when you look down the scope are completely negated by the fact with bullet drop. So I think bullet drop, good change for competitive all round. I know a lot of people don't like it though. So this season added weapon mods, which I think to be honest has been done pretty poorly throughout the entire year. I think weapon mods should have been able to just be moddable without a mod bench, but in season one, they just added mod benches inside vaults that were inside of the mythic POIs. Now these mythic POIs gave you a mythic weapon, but also gave you a medallion, which gave you infinitely recharging shield. 
and the more medallions that you got, the more shield and the faster that it would actually give you. So I really didn't like the fact that there was like four incredibly strong drop spots on the map all at once that give you massive advantages. If you've watched any of my videos, you know I'm not a fan of medallions. So the meta was really annoying, but I think bullet drop off and the rest of the weapons generally were pretty well balanced outside of the auto shotgun, which was really obviously a bit too strong. So for meta, I'm going to give this a six. For enjoyment, I'm going to give this a seven. For tournaments, similar to all the other seasons where you just really have solid tournaments that lead up into an FNC's Global Championship. So I'm giving it a seven. Now, would people go back and enjoy this? Probably yes. I think it was not that bad of a season. So I'm also giving it a seven. Chapter five, season two. Now this is the Grim Gate season, which was a very odd season competitively because similarly, the medallions ran super Supreme. In particular, of course, you had the Agility Medallion, which was Cerberus' Medallion, which famously Peterbot and Poyo ran through the whole lobby with. Now, there was a lot of frustrating things in this season, like the Thunderbolt of Zeus, you had the Chains of Hades, uh, and it was also a DMR meta, where they added the DMR, and also waterbending towards FNCS as well. So, there was a real, real boring Surge meta, and the fighting meta was kind of boring because of the Chains of Hades, which took up a lot of parts too. The mid-game objectives were bunkers, which are really not well designed, in my opinion, whatsoever and much rather have combat caches instead. And again, weapon mods are just still kind of pointless because now those weapon mod things are in bunkers rather than being in the mythic drop spots either. They did add the wings last second, which was really cool, but they were out for almost the entire season because they were so bugged. So many tournaments were bugged as well. It introduced the worst and most annoying shotgun of all time, which was the gatekeeper. So for meta, I'm giving this a four. For enjoyment, I think it was fun to play. I'm going to give it a six. Tournaments, same as always. We're getting a seven. And now would people enjoy this to play? Play back probably not dmr meta was incredibly boring so i'm gonna give this a four we're almost done chapter five season three just one 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 let me just list everything wrong with this season okay nitro nitro fists surge trading in plants cheaters in every tournament the nitro fists i already mentioned that but i'm saying it again the exploits where people are flying into the sky the infinite healing cactuses that got nerfed towards the end gatekeepers which i mentioned previously as well meta changes one or two days before grands the infinite exploding bowl that was in the start of the season. You get randomly kicked out of games for no reason. There's an auto reload bug. There's a coin that gives you infinite nitro where you can just run into everyone's box. Nuka Cola means you could just heal infinitely. There was also a fall damage bug with a bunch of nitro as well. I could keep going. There's a lot wrong with this season. Uh, hate it. Hate it. But they removed region lock. So yeah, uh, tournaments, I'm gonna give this a three. Meta, one. Enjoyment, one. Now, one. In case you're wondering, that will be the worst season of all time. Just nothing compares at all. And finally, the current season, Chapter 5, Season 4. I really like this season, I will say. I think this is one of the best metas we've had. The mythics this season feel much more balanced. None of them are really like super broken and worth landing on. Medallions also feel way more balanced. The only one that's really broken is the scan coin, which comes from the raft, which repeat basically the wall hack coin that repeatedly scans players around you. That one is incredibly broken and it's really annoying to fight. But overall, I think the rest of the meta is nowhere near as bad. I'm going to give this a solid 8 for the meta as well. Enjoyment, I'm also going to give this an 8 on enjoyment. I think this is a really enjoyable season all around. And for tournaments, I'm going to have to go with an 8 as well. Global Championships this year, which was really, really good. Cash Cups are super solid. They're attempting Reload Cups, which aren't really working that well, but there's a lot of potential in them, which are cool. Now, well, I mean, now is kind of irrelevant because this is now, so I'm going to give this the same as the enjoyment, which is also 8. Now, let's see the overall scores. What is the lowest and the worst season overall i'm finding out at the same time as you unsurprisingly chapter five season three worst competitive season of all time nobody here is shocked whatsoever second worst is chapter three season one i know the casuals won't be happy about that and then chapter one season six which again started competitive there wasn't much in it there followed by chapter two season six primal season so not 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 unsurprising the highest Ooh, we have a tie for first and second all right coming in at number three is chapter one season nine the world cup season basically heavily carried that's so funny i had a three out of ten for meta but because enjoyment and tournaments were 10 out of 10 and now is 9 out of 10, that's managed to make it all the way up to third. That's incredible. I can't believe that. Coming in second place, actually tied with first, but I'm giving it to the other season, is Chapter 2 Season 1, where we had an incredibly good meta. Everything was really well balanced. Nothing was really too broken. There was no mobility and it was squads which fit well. I can't believe a squad season has come this high. But most importantly, heavily carried by the prizing this season. Four weekly qualifiers for FNCS, 
DreamHack LAN with Winter Royale duos, which is $23 million. Uh, and the only reason this probably wasn't a little higher is because the enjoyment was a little low rating because it was such a long season. But number one, chapter one, season eight. The season which started the World Cup qualifiers weeks one to four. ESL Katowice Royale, you know, meta was still pretty hit or miss. Only a 6 out of 10 meta, but enjoyment tournaments and now were some of the highest ratings possible that you could get. Now, let me know which ones you are. I know everyone always disagrees with these, but if you want to see more of my rankings, you can click this video right here to see me ranking every single shotgun and figuring out which is the best and which is the worst.